Hi, everybody. I'm meteorologist Joe Chaffee. <clears throat> haven't done a Joe Stradamus long-range post for a while and because the short range has been so busy, so I thought uh, this would be a good time to take a look at what's going on. First of all, I'm going to look at uh, temperatures uh, as they uh, depart from normal, plus or minus, as we go through this week. Of course, it's pretty obvious with this major storm that we're going to have a, a big warm-up going into uh, Wednesday and Wednesday night with low pressure going by to our west. And then that kind of disappears, of course. And then we start to chill down. And you'll notice that there's a building area of cold air in Canada that gradually takes over. Uh, and as we move through next weekend and into next week, uh, it looks like we get into an area of below to much below normal temperatures for a couple of days. And then as we move on into the first week of March, temperatures basically stay a little bit below normal right through the period, uh, dominated by colder air up here in Canada. I'm looking, by the way, this is the ensemble view. Okay, we'll look at the operational view in a second because uh, the operational view uh, is always more volatile as you go beyond the, the seven-day time frame. So we'll look at the uh, GFS uh, view from a little, little bit earlier today, and we'll put that in motion. Let me just go back. We'll go back to the very beginning and start all over again. And, of course, you know, we go to near normal here for uh, tomorrow and Tuesday. And then there's our storm uh, for Wednesday. That goes up. And then you see the gradual uh, cool down to the end of the week. And then this large area of cold air that builds up in Canada that comes in for next weekend. Uh, all the models are pretty much telegraphing this, so this is not a surprise. And now we're into the middle of next week. And uh, we're still seeing temperatures well below normal throughout much of the eastern two-thirds of the United States. And then it just kind of moderates a little bit. Uh, you get a slight warm-up around the 6th of March. And then there's another cold push that comes in for the second weekend, uh, actually the first full weekend of March, uh, the 7th and 8th, which is as far as it goes. So it certainly does look like once this storm is done, that we go to a trend of below to occasionally much below normal temperatures. And the reason why this is happening is you know, when we look at the upper air, is that you have um, a, a few things going on. Uh, for one thing, you know, another warming up in the Arctic, and you do have some blocking that's developing uh, across uh, the, uh, the pole and, and over Greenland. Uh, this is for early this week. That block doesn't really hold very well. It still doesn't prevent a major storm from going by to our west. And I, I want to reiterate this again. You could have all these indicators. If things don't line up right, they really don't matter. So uh, now we go to the end of the week, and you can see the vortex that's setting up here. So this will be the source of our cold air. It's another one of these vortexes that comes down pretty far south. This one goes up. It's the last one came right down into New England and upstate New York. This one is bodily going down. Uh, into uh, the northern Great Lakes states and then moving its way to the east. But you'll notice there's high pressure aloft uh, along and just east of Greenland and going all the way back across the poles. You also still have this big, strong high uh, up in the uh, Pacific in the west. Uh, and that's usually at least one thing you want to look for for the possibility of any kind of uh, storm development. And there is something that does come down in that first week of March. Now, the model at this point is not going to do anything. And I want to say also, uh, think back through the whole winter, how many times the GFS or any of the models for that matter would print out a major storm in a perfect position 10 days out or more, or even more than seven or eight days out. And out of all of them, and you could probably count a hundred, how many of them really happen? None or so, very few. So I would just say to you that uh, I would honestly, from a forecast standpoint, I would rather see, I would rather look at the flavor of what's going on aloft and try to guess at what might happen rather than look at these specific model prints because it does get ridiculous. It's a waste of time to get excited over something that you see out on day nine or day 10. I think we all know that. Um, so, you know, when you tell me that a snowstorm, the model prints out a snowstorm on day nine or 10, well, yeah, I can see that it prints it out, but. Um, is there any kind of upper support to lend to that possibility? And even if there is, it doesn't mean that it's going to be there. So end of mini lecture there. Uh, but the bottom line is, you know, this vortex kind of dominates here in eastern Canada. Bridging stays pretty firm in the west throughout this period. So I, I think there really is room for one or two more surprises uh, between now and the middle of March. 
Uh, you know, if you're going to say to me that winter is over, uh, please have some meteorology to back that up um, because I just can't approach weather forecasting with that sort of mindset. It just doesn't work for me. OK, I can't make a, I can't make conclusions about things, you know, based on my emotions. I, I, I really would much rather look at. You know, I, I, I want to see what's going on. I want to see what's in front of me. And, you know, sometimes things are there that uh, wind up not being there down the road. And then the opposite is true. And you get surprises. So, you know, the, the, the signature of this whole winter has been volatility. Why that is going to stop now? There's no reason for it to stop now. Every time we've seen these trips up into the 60s, we have, it has been followed by an extreme change of some sort in the other direction within seven to ten days. I don't think this is going to be any different. So let's quickly look at the Europeans' view. And you can see here, there's our major storm uh, that's lined up uh, and goes to our west. And then the vortex strengthens over Hudson's Bay, comes barreling down on the European. It comes barreling down further east rather than into the Great Lakes. It kind of glances across uh, southeastern Canada, almost touching upstate New York for a brief period. Then it lifts up and around. But you can see, still see... There's general troughing that is out to our west, bridging up uh, the west coast or just inland of the west coast and the Rockies all the way up to uh, Alaska. And that form of ridging, that, that, that kind of look up to ridging remains there right through the 10-day period. And then the cold flow with uh, some sort of polar vortex over Labrador back to Hudson's Bay, that remains in place. So the players are here. And, and, and the players are, are, are there for something to happen. Whether they come together and line up to something, that's we're not going to know for, for, days, for days and days. So um, prepare for what happens this early part of the week, and we will uh, revisit this again a little bit later on.